Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. It's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. We're going to talk about uh, Bob Iger being in the hot seat and uh, getting graded on his performance. Mm -hmm. And I would grade him a lot harsher than they are grading him. Yeah, so we're going to talk about this because there there is chatter, especially with uh, there being so many activist investors that uh, you know uh, Iger's tenure could be limited. I don't know. I think he's going to have a lot more pressure on him, and uh, you know we'll see if he makes it. To, what is it 2026? That's is that what it is? Yeah, supposed to be like 2026. That. But you know after the Marvels backfired, and uh, I, I don't know how this is going to go. So let's talk about this. Let's delve into Bob Iger's report card before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Mm -hmm. Go out to shopclownfish.com. You've got one day. One day left to pre-order a copy of Shadowbinders Volume 3 shipping next summer. Mm -hmm. Next summer, so you know. And uh, first new Shadowbinders content in like 10 years. And uh, you can get books one and two as well. And almost, uh, almost 700 of you. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for the support. Yes, thank you. So this is uh, this come from the LA Times. Bob Iger was brought back to fix Disney. No one said it would be easy. Well, a lot of the problems were from Bob Iger. Yes. I'm, okay, so I want to. A year ago, yesterday, Bob Iger came back to Disney. Chapek was fired, and Bob Iger was brought back. That was on the 20th of November, 2022. Yeah. So we're a year into it, and now they're going to grade him on where where we're at. Yeah, so we'll get to his, his grade here, but this is this is interesting because I didn't realize uh, uh, during the earnings call that uh, Nathanson Flyer asked him, "What are you doing to fix the film slate, Bob? What are you doing, Bob?" I think that's when we tuned out, probably because honestly, it was so boring. I literally would rather have my teeth drilled than listen to another minute of the conversation. Uh, they said the film business that Nathanson referred to, which powers Disney, and it's true, the, the movies do, which powers Disney's multifaceted business has been a mounting concern. No, that's, a, that's putting it mildly. Putting it mildly. This month, the Marvels opened in theaters to a tepid 46 million tepid. ticket sales. It was the worst MCU opening. It was the worst MCU drop off. Tepid my ass. It that was just downright freezing. It was the, it was the biggest superhero movie drop-off ever. It was yeah. worse than Morbius. But this is tepid, guys. Tepid. Um, at this point, start for a film that cost more than $200 million. It was almost $300 million. Well, they got a $55 million credit. Some people say it's more than that, but then when you throw in marketing and stuff, it's going to be. It's going to be probably three three fifty dollars probably by the time they're done. They're playing softball. The uneven performance of Lucasfilm and Disney's animation and live-action releases have also raised worries. Un uneven? Uneven. Un wait, wait, wait. Uneven would imply that sometimes it's low and sometimes it's high. But that's not the case for any of the Lucasfilm stuff or Disney animation lately. It has None of them have done well. So uneven. based on what? Ahsoka didn't do great. You know, uh, Mandalorian season three didn't do great. Uh, animation, uh, Strange World didn't do great. How how is that uneven? I don't know. That that that's not uneven. No, it's it's a downward trend. That, that, that Everything is going down. That you have ups and downs. It does. There's no ups. That's there's, the problem. The only the only way I could say you could say Lucasfilm was uneven is that uh, Solo was a bomb in theaters because of the Last Jedi. People came back somewhat for the rise of Skywalker, but then they noped out again. Then the Mandalorian brought some people oh, they didn't back come out for the rise of Skywalker. A lot of people were like, "You pissed yeah, everybody off." Yeah, I mean, it didn't do nearly as off with that one. Yeah, it didn't do nearly as well, but it still did almost a billion. But they're talking about something. recent. They said in the last, like, since oh, the yeah, no, come it's, back. That's it's what they're talking critically, about. Critically, if they're talking critically, maybe, but not like, even critically. They haven't critically. They've been worse than the stuff worse than the audience. Everything's going down. It's so bad that South Park did an entire special mocking your company, Bob. South yeah. Park did an entire special mocking your company. And mo mocking KK and Bob. Yeah. And mostly Bob was the Palpatine to KK's Vader. You know? You know, it was like, you know, yeah. yeah. It's like, but, you know, it's just, you know, his tenure, his second tenure has been a rough ride so far. Yeah, because he made a bunch of bad choices the first time that didn't, didn't like, come back to bite them in the ass until the second time. So this is interesting. Um this media analyst said that uh, if Bob Iger was so concerned with his legacy, as everybody says, you know, ride of a lifetime, parts one and two and whatever, uh, he said that he he should have stayed in retirement. Agreed. Iger but, but he still was the cause of a lot of the problems. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I think Bob Iger should have stayed the hell away because now he has to clean up the mess he Well, because they could have deflected and said it was somebody else's fault, even though we it said the whole time that it wasn't, fault, yeah. that it was something Bob Iger had put in play first. Um 
but he could deflect it and everything else. Was, somebody else had to blame for it. But he came back. So now it's coming back. It's boomerangs back around and it's hitting you in the ass. So this, they don't think, and these are, again, these are, you know, insiders and this guy's the uh, president of Sports Corp Limited. He said there's no fixing it. He said there used to be a day when Bob Iger and Disney could stabilize the ground beneath them. But that day has come and gone for the whole industry. They're saying because of technology. So technology has altered the foundation. He can't stabilize it the way he used to. So I don't think there is any fixing Disney. I think Disney, I, I don't know, guys. Okay, well, let's look at the problem. So since, since Iger came back, since Iger came back, stock dropped down to lowest it's been in what, like 15 years, yeah, something like, like that. Yeah. That was that was under Iger. Yep. Um, theme park attendance was down. Yes. They ended up in the charter spectrum issue. They ended up in the problem with the SAG after and the WGA because they didn't like how he behaved. We ended up with uh, they made Florida worse. We yeah um, oh yeah and yeah. we ended up with a bunch of layoffs and cuts. Yep. We ended up they brought with, all that up. They brought um, all subpar. That up. You know every release has been subpar and something that could have been corrected when he came in and they didn't. We ended up with now he's he said that he made concert ABC and everybody worried they were gonna sell off ABC and they're probably selling off Disney Plus Hot Star because now they're gonna buy Comcast out and a lot of this stuff you know is all since he's been back. You yeah, know, it's just and a lot of the other stuff that's come around is stuff that happened because he overspent in Fox and everything the first time he was there, and it's now coming back around. And then for all they're like, well, he gave make party king free. Yeah, he's the one that made you pay. He for took it, it in away. The first place, yes, yes. He did this and he did that, and almost all of the stuff that they're talking about are things that he undid that he was the one who did in the first place. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's yep. like. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm just sitting here like, if you've been following this for years, like we have, I literally had a blog, one way or another, for what last like, gosh, how long we've had blogs for? 2015. Podcasts and blogs. Since, oh, podcasts. We're going back to like 2010. So like, we've had yeah. podcasts and blogs covering this Disney stuff for that long. Yeah. We've been watching it the entire time. We yeah. know what the fuck we're talking about. Um. So they're asking these these uh, investors, these Wall Street people, to grade. Bob Iger. Okay. And this is, uh, let's see here. This is a uh, Jason Baznet managing director at Citigroup. Mm -hmm. If I had to give him a grade, I'd, I'd say a B. I wouldn't even, no, nope. <laughs> I think what's gone right is we've seen a large restructuring. But Chapek was going to do that anyway. Yeah. He restored a PL responsibility to the studio heads. Which would be a good idea if we actually had original content. He's like, oh, no, that would now we're in the building and creative phase. Thing is, your creativity is bullshit. What, okay, we're in the creative phase. And what does he announce? Frozen 4. Frozen Toy 4. Toy Story 5. Toy Story um, 5. Guess what, guys? We skinned uh, Country Bear. We're going to put in the Indiana Jones ride. Uh, and we're going to do that overlay, which we already have in Disneyland, on the dinosaur ride, which is the same ride. So we're reskinning that. We're going to put a new Tree of Life projection show. With Zootopia and more meet and greets, but we're going back to creativity, folks. Well, I was I was going to talk about that. So, <laughs> so here's the thing: they're they're talking about how they're going to you know double down on on theme park because that that is other than movies, theme parks are their cash cow, right? Even when the movies were down, the theme parks always picked theme up. Theme parks the slack. always saved their ass. But now they've actually got competition. Universal was no threat. Knott's Berry Farm, no threat. Like the other theme parks were so far behind, they were distant second place. Now people are choosing Universal over Disney, and that's without Nintendo. Yeah, well, Nintendo's coming. But they did all the stuff for Wizarding World and stuff yeah. at, at Universal. When they didn't have that, it wasn't a big deal. When they brought that and that, that started. With Disney Imagineers, by the way. Yes, yes. Because you know? they got rid of them at Disney. Yes. And they started it there, there, and now we're going to Epic Universe. And Epic Universe is going to destroy Disney at this point if Disney doesn't do something. And I'm sorry, taking Dinosaur and sticking Indiana Jones on it isn't enough to cover it. Making, <sighs> putting IP Disney songs to Country Bear Jamboree isn't enough to cut it. Yeah, this is all just a, a fresh coat of paint because I don't think Disney realistically at this point has the money mm -mm. to spend to compete with Universal, especially mm -mm. if they got to pay for Hulu. And they're paying Hulu the money to Comcast, which runs Universal. Yeah. So they're just getting all this money for Hulu. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I personally do not see how Disney is going to turn this around. I don't, I mean, at this no point, time soon. even if they decide today, okay, you know what, guys, we're going to push the pause button on everything and we're going to rethink our game. And they can't, you know, the Disney machine can't just like stop and rethink. But but they're going to double theme park stuff, Neon. Uh, 
Yeah, but they also said that it was going to be a 10-year yeah, investment. Yeah, over 10 years, yeah. And, and they wouldn't see returns on this until the end of 10 years. You know how long it takes Disney to build one damn roller coaster now? Mm-hmm. Like, it took them, what, five years to build the Tron coaster, which was just a clone of a pre-existing attraction? They basically shut the D23 twice and been like, blue sky, blue sky, blue sky. Razzle dazzle. And then, and then yeah, the one that yeah. we mentioned that before we're changing it slightly in here, oh, you're going to have the stuff from that we took for Animal Kingdom that we mentioned. We're going to, you know, it basically is, is one is attraction they already have overlaid and then some other cheap ass shit. And yeah. it's like, and it's going to be what it mostly is going to be is restaurants and stores that you can spend money. Yep. That's that's exactly, and you look at their lands, usually when they build the lands, it's like, yeah, it's like one attraction, maybe, you have like a main attraction, you have your uh, e-ticket, and then you've got, well, you know, another attraction. Then it looks like a carousel. Stores. Yeah, which is cheap. You know, back here we have Indiana Jones, which is the temple, then there's like this one thing over here, which looks like it might be an attraction, it also could be like, because there's a back building, so it has to be an attraction of some kind. The whole lot, the whole alley leading up is stores and restaurants. And then there's another little house thing back here, um, these house things here. You know, they're saying that. And, that's, and a lot of times they'll say they're going to do this. And then they, it get, it's cut back and cut back and cut back. The only thing I can guarantee you will do is put Indiana Jones and Dinosaur because it's a reskin. Yeah, and that's easy. They can clone it. Or, yeah, it's not set in stone. This is, this is just like Epcot, okay? They had this blue sky vision for Epcot. And people were like, wow, it's really awesome. Well, the version of that we're getting is, is the, like the wish version of it. It's yeah. Like it's like they cut a lot cut. of it out. So there's like, this is what they, they're dreaming of plans. This is what they'd like to do. Here's the thing. They have no, except Disney, as long as, and they might have to change because of Epic universe, but as long as attendance is fine, they really have no incentive. And the only reason they're doing this, the only reason they're doing this is they know once Nintendo opens and Epic Universe opens, they're screwed. Like, everybody's going to go there because it's brand new. It's mm -hmm. shiny. It looks like they're throwing everything they got at it. And Universal, they can put together a whole freaking park in a couple of years. And it takes Disney five years to build a roller coaster. You know, I'm mm -hmm. just saying. It's it's. Uh, is there still a giant hole in Epcot? How many years has that well, been Well, it's now? actually going to be, that's going to open back up, I believe, in supposedly next month. Remember that, that, uh, like triple decker festival pavilion thing that was supposed to go there. They knocked down a building for. Yeah. No, it's not coming. Yeah. That's not coming now either. Um, there's just put Mary Poppins ride in all this other stuff. No, nope, that's not just a carousel. That. Like how hard is it? Well, to that's put the carousel probably right there. They just moved it. And they're going to reskin it. I'm just, I don't know. This whole thing is just, okay. <laughs> if it comes out like this and there's all these new attractions and stuff. Okay. That'd be great. Do I think that we're going to get that? I think we'll get some version of the, of the Encanto house. Cause you can't do it without the house. And you're going to get, you it'll know, the Indiana Jones. Yeah, it'll be like, or like some kind of themed restaurant or something like we did, they do with the Beast's Castle. And you're going to get some, you're going to, and you're going to get the Indiana Jones because they already have the basic ride system. They just have to reskin it. You'll probably get those for sure. The rest, you know, we'll see. A carousel, I'm sure they'll put that in because that's cheap ass and they could just, it's like Toy Story Land. They'll just get something out of box and, you know, paint it one way and put it up. Yeah, Toy Story Land was like. That was deliberately done on the cheap just to get something in the Hollywood studios. The ride, the same one they had before. The one. The, uh, Twister you know, Mania. Mania. And then, Midway Mania. They added a roller coaster, which is cool. And the Flying Saucers is just kind of a typical carny theme park. You it's know. kind of like the one, ones they have at Disneyland. Yeah. You know, and then um, and so, and so then we had the Slinky Dog. Yeah. So you got two new rides. One was like pretty much a carnival ride that they just put their version of cars on. One's a roller coaster, which is that kind of cool. Um, you got a, a, a restaurant s. They added a new one. They added, added table service then since. But you had the uh, the the lunchbox area, yeah. and then you have the midway mini they already had. And yeah. but it does look like it was just. It's more not so much now, but when it first opened, it looked like it was just temporary. Yeah, like kind of like Thailand USA, where it looked like it was just carny and temporary. Yeah, it well, was like that. That's where I was going with this because that's what they're replacing in right. Animal Kingdom with is a carousel. It looks like. Yeah, and the, the the reason they did Dino Land USA is it was a park attendance was down. Disney, the money wasn't flowing in, and so they had to do something, and they did something cheap, and rather than build Beastly Kingdom, which is what they should have done, which is what they should have done, and a lot of those ideas went to Islands of Adventure along with the Imagineers. They they built Dino Land USA. They just got some off the shelf, you know, freaking you know coaster and and and. Which people died on, by the way, because it was a it was a mouse ride. trap ride. Yeah, which you can find in like any theme park, and they're like, "Oh, that's the charm of it. It's a roadside attraction, and that's what they're going to do here too." Be like, "Oh, the charm of it's like it's all 
you know, vaguely uh, South American themed or whatever. Well, clearly the boneyard's gone because they need that room for this stuff, some of this stuff. Well, if you're getting rid of dinosaur. You yeah. Know, uh, yeah. I don't know. So back to what with the other list of things. But this is like the first. Oh, because of theme parks. And I'm like, no, no, not really. No. No. Does anybody else give him a grade? Is just one person? I uh, just is one guy saying a B. A B. But, no. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. Not a B. There's too many things that have gone down. It has been really bad. It, the company has been, you know, losing right and left. I would not say a B by any means. And even then, a lot of the problems they're facing now were from before. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, though. There, he's talking about in the Ride of Lifetime. He said that um, they basically transitioned to Disney Plus and going all in on Disney Plus too quick. And it kind of They hurt. did. They did. They announced it and did it fast. But, I mean, to be fair, the flip side of that was I'll give them Disney Plus because that kind of saved their ass when the pandemic hit. So, I mean, Disney Plus being there and Florida being willing to let them open were the two things that saved them. Yeah, and now streaming's crumbling. That's what's so funny about this is like they went all in on this business model that lasted like two years. And the only reason you got the boost you got was everybody's locked in their houses. You know, they had to watch TV because they didn't have anything else to do. But he said, yeah, we're hastening the uh, disruption of our own business and the short-term losses are going to be significant. I'd assumed we'd transition to the new model and baby steps, slowly building the apps and determining what content would be live on them. But because the response was positive, the entire strategy took on a greater sense of urgency. Greater sense of urgency. And uh, he talks about the Fox. Well, sometimes I have a greater sense of urgency, too, but the outcome is still the same. Oh. And you flush it. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, this just goes on and on. Basically, everybody is taking a dump, speaking of which, on Bob Iger, and everything is crumbling. They're talking about Pixar. They're mm -hmm. like, yeah, Marvel's, no, yeah, Pixar, no, Marvel's crumbling. For two decades, Pixar popped out one blockbuster after another. Elemental has soft opening and eventually recovered, but they said Wish uh, is coming out to no, mixed reviews. it's not. If, if, Wish, if Wish is going to get good reviews, it's going to be for the diehard pixie dusters who like the Easter eggs. I'm still going to tell you, the audience score on that will probably be high because you're going to have the pixie dusters. But I don't think it's going to do great. The MCU has been stretched the most uh, since the franchise's peak in 2019 with Endgame. The Feige-run superhero powerhouse has turned out multiple shows on Disney+, Plus, alongside its pipeline of several movies a year. There's simply too much Marvel content, a film scholar says. Instead of delighting... He must be all right. Instead of delighting fans as we might have expected it to, the abundance seems to have alienated many of them in recent years. That has to be the... That's the only explanation. There's just too much. It couldn't possibly be have anything to do with the quality. Yeah, well, here then uh, they said about lower quality studios. Disney had really strong titles in the last fiscal year. Avatar Way of Honor did do well. That one is true. They did. Yeah, but uh, that. The pandemic created a lot of challenges. Creative. No, 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 no. You know, not the pandemic. What you did was you were trying to get uh, qu uh, quantity over quality. And you're trying to get as much shit to Disney Plus as you could. Trying to get people more stuff, more subscribers. And yeah, just gave, you put out a bunch of crap and people got tired of it. People are like, wait, you know, you want us to pay you. We're paying for the Disney difference and you're not giving us Disney. It's like, what is this? Yeah. People were just like, it's, it's freaking like you guys. Be my ass. To be my Try ass. Try like a C minus or a D. D. I mean, not even, D. and I'm being generous. So they still don't know who the successor is going to be. I mean, lots of problems. They said, you know, but they're like, we're oh, going well, to create it. We're going to, we're, that was, that was what they call, what do you call it? The, the first phase was they had to the, like, you know, get it cleaned up and, the and building phase, the, 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 whatever the, they're going into the building phase, but that was the, the destruction phase, whatever he called it. I forget now. Cause I really didn't give a shit. It was boring. Anyway, that was the first one. They had to prune everything. And now they're going to launch forward with the creativity creativity in the building. And by by creativity, I mean Frozen 4 and Toy Story 5. And, we're only on know. second base, guys. We're working on third base right now. Eventually, we're going to hit a home run. Um, Slap some paint on it. Put an IP on it and say it's it's new. It's my version. That's a theme park version of put a chick in it and make it land, make it gay. God, this is just It's the so, same thing, except it's just with theme parks. I think they're trying to make it look like they're doing something with minimal effort and minimal finances. That's like, what they oh, do with all the meet and greets. Yeah, it's like, oh, we're doing something, guys. Look, I'm like, greet. would anybody sit down and compare apples to apples and be like, okay, so you're just reskinning some of your attractions and putting new characters in the park or whatever. Meanwhile, Universal's building a whole nother freaking park 
that's massive with all brand new attractions. Some of them have brand new technology, patented technology. And you guys, it takes you five years to clone a coaster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tron coaster was already in, and was it Shanghai? Shanghai, yeah. Yeah, it was already over there. And they just brought it here. Yeah, oh, they're doing cool stuff, but they're Ratatouille, doing it overseas. same thing. It was in France. And it was they in France. It here. People are like, oh my God, right, too, right. I'm like, yeah, it was already, it was out for it years. It was already a thing. And honestly, it's not that big a deal. It's not that great. You liked it. I thought it was lame, personally. It was okay. I, mean, I, it was okay. I, I, I thought it was not worth the excitement. Apparently, some people get really excited in Ratatouille, but that's a whole other video. That was a whole other video. Somebody got really excited. Um, yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, so there we go, guys. Everybody's kind of beating up on Bob Iger now. B, a B. A B. Oh, bullshit. B I'm for, a teacher. B's for bullshit. That's not a B. <laughs> you have to put some effort in to get a B. F minus, Bob. F minus. <laughs> F minus minus. You're negative points now. You're negative, uh, I'm just, negative I points. just, I can't. I, it's like my stock, it's yeah, negative. Yeah, now, now although stock went up some, but oh. he announced, like, he announced like, this, all these changes and it literally was, oh, Tree of Life, yay, we're going to put this utopia on a, a new light show. You yeah. know, everybody's expecting a Zootopia land. It's a light show. Yeah, I bought most of my Disney stock under $100, and I sold it uh, well over $100 when it was clear that they were declining. I was like, yeah, they're 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 on the down. They're on the the, the big drop at the end. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I mean, look, Disney has ups and downs. They've had ups and downs for decades. I don't think the company's going to go out of business or anything. I mean, they'll get acquired by somebody else before that happens. But they're not going to be going up anytime soon. I don't think so. I think it's even if they decide, like I was, I was saying before, even if they decide today, let's course correct it. Let's fix Marvel. Let's fix Star Wars. Let's fix Pixar. Let's fix the theme parks. You're looking at least 10 to 15 years. Yeah. At 100 years old, it's hard to get things up. It's it hard is. to get up. It's it's very hard to get up. It's like yeah. those things that are in motion stay in motion. When you see the old people sit down and they can't get back up and move, that's kind of where Disney is. Well, somebody needs to give give them a lap dance. Get it moving again. Are we going to wrap this up? Yes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a comeback for that one. Actually, you probably break their hip at that point. I don't have a comeback for that. Anyway, yes. Um, yeah, let's uh, see that coming. Let's wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture moments. <laughs> No, no, just stop. Yes, wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. You have a magical touch.